guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's get on with the video and we're gonna be installing a charger that you might not know about. That's a beast. So this is the Viva and it's made by Marlec who have been in the industry for over 40 years in the renewable sector. So they know what they're doing. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll get more detail with this later on. We're gonna actually move the charger to this location now. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drive into that soffit in a minute and I'm gonna drop that off. And then when we come out, we'll bring the cable behind that so it's fairly discreet and then it's going to do a nice little drip loop and then up into the, the bottom of the Viva. So guys, we've brought the EV Ultra down just there so it's able to go behind that SWA and then it's gonna come down this way along and this temporary Verso board we're putting in here, it'll just come into the side of it as will the tails gland. And we're gonna have Henleys over here. For the Henleys, I've gone for the colored Luden ones so I think they're a nice little touch and they clip together and they look really smart. So looking forward to trying those out. Um, so yeah, next steps are just to get all that tidied up in the loft. We're just gonna long lead um, to check the gas is bonded outside because there's no cable there, but we can confirm, see if it's bonded or not at that point. All right guys, so we're just gonna test the continuity of the gas pipe because there's no cable visible here or where you'd expect it to be. So we've got the long lead and old. I'm gonna slap her on down here on the gas pipe. And then Pete's inside the other end, so he's gonna let me know if it's, uh, it's getting a decent reading. Are we looking, Pete? Yeah, 0 0.03, 0 0.03. That's decent, so it is bonded somewhere, then we just can't physically see it. So let's take a deeper dive as to what's inside this box. Uh, it's eight meters long in terms of the tethered lead, so that's cool. Lots of length, so you, know, you can park pretty much wherever you want here and you're gonna be good. Um, so with inside the Viva charger, you get the user guide, which is obviously for the customer. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to leave with them because it'll explain how to use the charger, how to use the app, how to schedule, all those sorts of things. Obviously things you should run through with them on site once installed, but it's good for them to have that by their side should they have a question in the future. Next, I'm looking forward to trying this out. And this is something that you don't often get, but it's nice to have. Some other chargers do do it. It's a drilling template, so we'll see how good that is a bit later on. Lastly, most importantly for me and Pete, and anyone else that's gonna be fitting these, is the electrical installation guide. But this will give us all the ways to install the charger, the best tips, how to install the cabling if we don't know. Obviously we use EV Ultra all the time, but um, any little things about this charger that are different from others, that'll all be in here so we can go through that. And when we're setting it up later on, we'll run through commissioning and everything like that, so that's cool. But it's a really useful manual, it's covering everything. Um, so yeah, don't lose that. And what we'll do is we'll pop this charger out of the box and uh, we'll take a look at what else is inside. So we'll just go through the other items in the box, guys, and I'm gonna start with the CT clamp. Now we'll go into a bit more detail about this when we're actually installing it, but on the front here, it's clearly labeled with arrows pointing to and from the consumer unit and meter. So we'll go through that in a bit more detail when installing it as to what that means in the manual and how it needs to go in, but it is vital. So we'll go through that a bit later on. So that's the side. We've then got a bag of goodies. So this has got stuffing glands in, it's got fixings, uh, it's got some washers, and it's also got a little junction box, and that's if you need to extend the CT. Likewise, we'll talk about that a bit later on. Some nice little instructions on the front there as to how to use the fixings to come with it. We've got this little bracket here, which will go behind the charger at the top. This will then allow us to neatly wrap that lead round when not in use. We'll have it looking nice. Lastly, we've got an interchangeable front cover. So the good thing about Viva is they have multiple front cover options. So the centerpiece down the front, you can change for I think four different options. Um, there might actually be more, so do check on that, but it's at least four. It's as simple as taking six screws out on the inside of that cover, putting this in its place, and then screwing the back in. And it's a nice little touch because you can change it as and when you want, but it's, it blends in with most different you know, sorts of building types. So that's a nice touch by Viva. Um, so I think what we'll do now is we'll get this cable finished clip round and um, yeah, we'll get the Viva on and we'll run through that in a bit more detail. All right guys, let's, uh, let's give this drilling template a go. What I've done is I've made holes through the fixing points so then I can use the old trusted marksman on it. Yeah, the best thing to do now is we'll get those drilled out with the SDS. It works quite nicely actually. It would work nicer on a flatter wall, but it has worked. 
Uh, so we'll get it drilled out and then we'll get it on the wall together. Now it comes with fixings, so we're going to use them um, because they seem pretty decent. So yeah, these are the fixings they come with and they also come with those nice little washers as well. Um, so it seals that as you're screwing it back. So I'll just get it lined up and then uh, we'll get her on. What we'll do first is we'll get that top one in. Um, so that's going to be the, the hardest one. And then, um, yeah, get the show on the road. Just going to get it through the hole ready. So now hopefully I get my impact in there. Are we on it? We're on it. Let's get it in that top one. And the good thing about the Viva is that it's actually got a level in. I will use my level as well because I don't always trust those, but um, we'll compare and see how good it actually is. So that's nice. Let's get my level out as well. I'm double sure. Have I still got it? No, I haven't. Always putting things away. Okay. Yeah, to be fair to it, it's, it's almost bob on the level inside it, so you can sort of trust it, but I'd always recommend using a proper level. What I'll do is I'll just finish that up by hand, um, just so it doesn't pull in too much. As I said, the wall is, that's perfect. So at my level, is saying just off. I'm just going to adjust these. The wall's a bit of a wobbly one on this one, so it's just a case of playing around with it and then doing them up by hand now to make sure that's nicely level. Now it's saying level, but I also like to just stand back and look at it by eye because that's always a good way to do it. So let's do that together. That is what you say looks good from my house. No, that is uh, that is looking nice. So as you can see, we've brought the EV Ultra, where well, you can't see actually, that's the whole point, down behind that drain pipe. Put the drain pipe back on and now we can just loop up and do a nice loop into the bottom of the charger. Right, so within the charger guys, we've got our power terminations here. So we've got the, the earth, the neutral and the live conductor. And then over here, you've then got your um, two cores for the CT plus the grounding of that data cable. So with this charger, it's important to do that when extending the CT. Um, so it's in their manual, it's in their instructions, and they like you to ground that Cat5 or two core data, whatever you've used in this terminal here. So we'll look in the manual a bit later on and explain that a bit further. But yeah, your data's over here and your mains is here. So what we'll do is we'll get these cut back to length, I've left them nice and long. We'll do a nice loop here, get them in, and then we'll, we're gonna go inside and uh, start having a look at that fuse board. Right, so we've got the Cat5 strip back. Um, we're only gonna need two twisted pairs for the actual CT. We've got shielded Cat5, and it's important to ground the shielding. So um, what we've done with that is I've just folded it over to create a bigger surface area to go in the actual terminal around here and then best practice to put some earth sleeving on that. Now this is to stop interference and it only needs to be done one end, so I'm doing it this end. This charger is fairly unique in the fact that it has that option, whereas a lot of them don't. I thought we'd take a couple of minutes to talk about all of the features that the Viva charger has. Now, it has all the things you'd expect it to have, like app control, Wi-Fi connectivity, smart charging and scheduling, which is great. One thing I like about this, that still there's a lot of chargers out there that don't have, is solar compatibility. So you can use solar from your roof to charge your vehicle for free. Now, as I said, we're gonna be back here in a few weeks actually putting 28 panels on this roof space. Um, so he's gonna have a hell of a ray. He's gonna have a lot of generation. So he can store that in the give all in one and he can also send it to this way to get charging for free. That's pretty cool. And also within the Viva app, you can actually set it to holiday mode. So if you're away, if you're out and you're not here for a period, it means that charger cannot be used by anybody else until they've unlocked that again within the app. I think that's pretty awesome because it is a concern of customers that when they are out and about, is someone gonna pull up and use my charger? Well, who knows? It is possible. You know, it's unlikely, but it is possible. So rest assured with the Viva, you can set that to holiday mode in the app and then nobody can use it.
Right guys, let's go through setting this Viva up um, from an installation perspective in the commissioning side of things together. So in a minute on the screen, it's gonna pop up and we'll run through it together. So the first thing, so you need to download the Viva app and then at the bottom it says, are you an engineer? Set up charge points. Now what we wanna do, as it clearly says on the screen, is press the Wi-Fi pair button on the front of the charger until the LED turns yellow. Great. So now we're gonna hop into the settings of the phone go to Wi-Fi and find the Viva hotspot. So we'll just wait for that to pop up here. It can take a moment. Uh, and in the meantime, um, I'm, I've really enjoyed this installation. It's been so simple to install. We're at the final stages now. We're just waiting for that Viva to pop up on the screen. Viva 1553. So let's just let that connect and then we'll head back in uh, to the app itself. It's always when you're waiting, it always takes a bit longer. Connect only this time. Let's hop back into the app. We're now connected to the Viva charge point. The next step is to set up the Wi-Fi point or add home Wi-Fi. So within here, you can see it's showing our supply voltage, the house current, so the household current, because we've got the CT, and we'll talk about that when we go in. And then um, you've got the current measuring clamp fitted. Yes, earth rod fitted, no, because we don't need an earth rod in this scenario. It's got pen fault built in, and we're TNCS. Yes. So now what we want to try and do is connect to the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi we're looking for is the TP-Link. Enter password. Check the charge point ring. If the light ring is red, please retry to set up. This may take up to 10 seconds. If the light ring shows green, you are connected to the Wi-Fi. So we're green. So we are finished, set up. So it was as simple as that. Right guys, just a final little video inside. So we've just got that to label up in terms of the date, albeit it's gonna be coming out very soon anyway again, when we're putting the, the double stacker in. Um, so for now, we've got the Henley blocks here. The Luden one's really nice, color coded, and they, they link in together, so they slot in, and it's just a nice uh, nice look, I think. And if you've got multiple of them on three phase, you can have a whole, see a whole stack of them and they slide in. And either side, any combination works. So the CT clamp, let's talk a bit more about that, as I mentioned earlier. So it's round the, these, these two gray tails. The one that's on is the live tail coming from the meter box um, via the isolator, which is the other side of the wall. So it needs to be round the tail that comes from between the meter and then what it's supplying, so the fuse boards. On it, it's got two arrows. One is pointing towards consuming it and one is pointing towards meter, obviously opposite directions. On this, we've got the arrow uh, for the consuming it pointing down because it's coming through the wall from the meter, down and then into the Henley blocks, which are feeding the boards. And the meter arrow is obviously facing that way, which is back to the meter. And this is important because it's monitoring the load of the house at all times so what they're using in the property and the charger and it will lower the charge rate if they're pulling too much at any one period whilst charging. It's also important because we're going to be having solar on the roof here very soon when we're back and it will also monitor what's coming down off the array and equally allow them then to use that solar that's been harnessed to charge the car for free. That's why it's critical it goes the right way around and the manual is super easy to understand for the Viva and um, it's nicely labeled so you can't really make a mistake there. Now as I mentioned earlier outside the other end of this at the charger end the Cat5 we've used to join to this in the EV Ultra, the screened Cat5. It's important that you use that screening to ground the cable and that stops any interference. So I think what we'll do now is uh, I'll get Pete to label that up and we'll hop outside we'll take a look at the finished article. Look at this one absolute beauty. What I've done earlier this came all the same color of the front plate so I put the second interchangeable one on because I thought it Look nice two-tone. Um, so on the front of the charger here, you can actually plug this lead into that directly, but the way I've called it currently, it looked quite nice like that. You could just um, have a, an extra loop and then plug in like so, and it's just a case of reconfiguring that so it looks tidy. Um, but for now, what we'll do is we'll put this uh, cover back on it to protect the charging lead. Wrap it back brown. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Also, leave some comments below. Keen to see what you thought of the video. 